wants to do a, a world tour incorporating magic, like I said. Eighty-six days of vomiting, waiting on a new doctor and test. I will not let this all break me. When I get to go outside, which is now about one hour a day, I walk three to four miles with Canadian crutches, 100 push-ups, and 100 lunges and jumping jacks. On protein shakes and protein bars, I force myself to try and beat all of this so I can go home to Seth and get to meet everyone around the world and has been there for me. We are going to have such a beach party when I get this all done. I keep paying for photos and sending them out so everyone can see. My mullet is blonde again, but for some reason they never make it out of the prison or they get stolen in the mail. But I'll keep trying. If you like President Biden or not, he is a president and he is the one right now that can fix this and do the right thing and sign my pardon. So please put your opinions aside for me and be my voice to him to do this before November election so I can go home and finish getting healthy. Home will be Fort Smith, Arkansas, and Gulf Breeze, Florida. Love everyone around the world. Joe Exotic. Hey, Galifamous Rachel. And Rhea. And we're the Gala Sisters. We're actually Irish twins. Yeah, which means we're 15 months apart or less. So uh, we've got another spill of coffee today. Actually, this one's a little different than any spill of coffee we've ever done. Today, we're talking about... Joe Exotic. And sorry, there's no hashtag awareness on. No, we this is more important. We got to get this done because Joe's appeal is coming up in September and we believe that Joe got oversentenced and is pretty much innocent. So we brought on his current power of attorney and one of his best friends to share what's going on with Joe. Mhm. So oh, let's, let's spill, spill the, the coffee. coffee. With, with Tammy. Tammy. Okay, my name is Tammy Springer, and I am power of attorney and executive assistant for Joe Exotic. So um, I'm not only his power of attorney, but I I do like almost everything for him um, because I'm his assistant. So um, okay. I pretty much supervise everything <laughs> that he has going on, That's personal and business and everything else. <laughs> yeah. So we sent him a letter and he messaged us back. He sent one back to us. Right. And he said that being in prison is, I mean, it's not nice for anyone, but in particular for him, it sounds like it's been horrible. Yeah. He's had a rough time. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Oh, there's so many things. Okay. First of all, he's a very sociable person. and. They've kept him in solitary for a lot of the time he's been there. I mean, it'll be, I think next month will be four years since he was arrested. So of that time, he spent a couple of years of that in solitary. Wow. I know they do that with months at a time. So uh, for different reasons, you know, and sometimes he doesn't even know the reason, but um, I know during COVID, there was a lot of quarantining and stuff like that going on. Um, yeah. so he wasn't allowed to have visitors for a really long time. Wow. And the other re reason is, um, well, he thinks he's a political prisoner because of the setup and the circumstances of him being arrested, um, which I believe that's true. And we have evidence to show that's true, but also because of him being gay, uh, there's a lot of targeting from the staff that don't like him for that reason yeah why do you think that he is innocent or or was punished too harshly harshly well i well he says he's innocent i believe that he's innocent uh the the witnesses that were the government called for his trial have most of them have recanted their testimonies um, and they've signed affidavits saying the government bullied us, the government threatened us, they coerced us. That's why we said the things we said. 
a lot of the evidence was fabricated. Conversations were um, set up so that it would fit their agenda, uh, you know, so they could get conviction. Yeah. I've glanced at some of the documents that were submitted that I was able to find. And most of it honestly looks like hearsay. And hearsay is not admissible in a court of law. Um, I think what they played for the jury was a recording of him talking with their uh, undercover FBI agent and their conf confidential informant um, about Carol Baskin. Uh, but it it was just talk and it was a group of people talking. And, and you got to understand that Carol Baskin was the enemy of anybody that owned exotic animals. So everybody, everybody in that community and everybody at the zoo certainly despised her because she made their life so difficult and, and actually attacked his livelihood. And that's the main, main reason that he was trying to expose her uh, just for all the scams that she was running and also for her uh, killing her husband, which he thinks that she did. Um, so, you know, that was his way of kind of getting back at her for destroying his, his uh, he used to do mall shows and travel around the country with his tigers. Yes, I remember. And some other animals. He did magic shows in malls. Mm -hmm. He did yeah. some here near my town, all through the Midwest, Illinois, Iowa, uh, Michigan, Indiana. Uh, I'm not sure all the states, but that was how he fed his animals in the winter. So, so that was really attacking his livelihood and his ability to take care of his animals when she started emailing all the malls saying, oh, he's a bad guy. You shouldn't let him do this. And so he gradually lost all those gigs he had. So that was what started the whole thing. Yeah. What I remember him from is he did some like guest spots with like Jack Hanna when we were kids. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that much about Jack, Jack Hanna. I can't really speak about that. But I mean, Joe, what he would do is his shows he did at malls were free. And they were like out in the main part of the mall. And I mean, I have pictures of the crowds. I mean, there were people would just crowd to come and see him. He would do magic, a magic show. And he also had a, a monkey that he used for a show. And he had a, a baby tiger. And he would make the kids promise not to do drugs, not to drink and drive, uh, to finish school. I mean, it was a very wholesome show. And he would tell the story about his brother that got killed by a drunk driver, which is why he was so against it. Uh, so it was, it was something that, you know, people looked forward to it was free and they would bring their kids and, and he would do magic. And he was pretty good. I have a lot of videos of the magic shows that he did and he was pretty good. He wants to do it again. If he gets out of <laughs> magic shows. But um, yeah, so that's how it got started. The rivalry between him and Carol. And then so he tried to retaliate by, you know, talking about her and her, her disappearing husband and and you know all the, all the all the scams that she did to try to get people to donate to these animals that she bought for her sanctuary and and, and so on. So it kind of became this big thing. Um, and she just wanted him out of business and gone. Any competition, she squashed it. Anything she didn't like, it looks like she squashed. Well, she wanted. She said before she wants to be the only person with big cats in in America. I mean, she wants to put an end to all the private zoos, for sure. And she calls herself, you know, a sanctuary and wishes she didn't have to exist, et cetera. But if you take all of that fluff off from there, she's doing exactly the same thing that these other zoos are doing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, she wasn't always a sanctuary before Big Cat Rescue it was called Wildlife on Easy Street. And she yeah. actually had a bed and breakfast where people could sleep with cougars. You know, and I she, kind of remember. She used to breed them herself. Uh, but then she kind of changed her tune and said, well, okay, I'm not going to breed them anymore. So she just started like hoarding them. Oh, but that's she charged people to come and see them. So what's the difference? There isn't one. She didn't allow petting. That's the difference. She didn't breed or allow petting like Joe did. So she started calling him an animal abuser and turning people against him and paying people to make comments online and email malls and stuff like that. But I, I don't really want to talk about Carol Baskin. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. Really what, what I, I mean, what that, isn't that illegal behavior too? <laughs> oh yeah, she's a 
a stalker. She's a bullier. She stalked me. Oh my God. Kind of yeah. She, she sent me a message out of the blue, a messenger wanting me to email her. And I told Joe and he said, well, just don't say too much. Just email her to see what she wants. So I did. I said, um, what do you want? <laughs> What's your motive here? And she's just trying to talk me into not supporting him, not helping him, you know, trying to say he's guilty and here's the link to all the evidence and, you know, stuff like that. And just trying to appeal to my ego saying, oh, well, she went on my Facebook and kind of stalked me. She's saying, oh, I see you like cats because I have 11 cats. So I love cats. And she's saying, oh, I see you have a master's degree and I know you're smarter than that. You know, to try to make me feel like what I'm doing is like, you know, I'm stupid for doing what I do for Joe. Yeah. So do you know what Joe would do if he got out? What he what would do? Plans? What are his plans? Like, does he, have any he wants to do it? He already has a promoter. He wants to do a, a world tour incorporating magic, like I said, and comedy and music. Those three things. That's kind of cool. That's cool. Yeah. And, you know, he's such a big personality that the money to be made on Joe is not so much from products. It's more from him personally. So he if he could, which is something he can't do now. So yeah. if he could do cameo, if he could do, uh, uh, personal appearances, book signings, you know, things like that. I mean, he could, he could do very well because people just want that personality of his. Yeah. He has yeah. a very big personality. His personality is larger than that. Yeah, he's yeah. He's one of a kind for sure. <laughs> I mean, we've watched everything that's been made about him and with him in it. And I mean, he, they're just something that draws you into him and I know that his manager at one point when he was running for political office said that I mean you talk to someone and they're like yep I'll vote for you I mean that just seems like who he is he's very charismatic and I think Louis Thoreau said in the special he did on Joe that he didn't want to like him he went you know he went and he interviewed me think, interviewed him thinking I'm not gonna like this guy and he liked him I mean it's really hard not to like him but once you get to know him, it's really hard not to because he's just so likable. Aw. Yeah, he's a very friendly guy and very generous person, which Tiger King didn't really show that, how generous yeah. he is. And that peacock thing they made him, that was terrible. Oh, that was a train wreck. I think that Carol Basket paid for that one. <laughs> it, was, it looked like, it was like, wait, he killed the cats? I don't think so. I don't remember that, no. I mean, it kind of made her look like a victim, too. I don't know. I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't, we didn't like it either. No. I thought it was terrible. I'm looking at her. I'm he like, said, oh. Joe said, oh, that actor that played him was too gay. He acted too gay. That's not how I act. That's <laughs> <was> funny. <laughs> and, then, and he was right. I don't think anyone could play Joe the right way. No, we didn't think the guy He's did such it. an odd combination of traits. <laughs> He's the most extroverted person just about ever. He has no filter, not really. I mean, he doesn't. I mean, you have to get used to that part. <laughs> tells it like it is. Oh, we hang out with reporters. We do. <laughs> he would be. He would be really good at that too. Reporting. Oh my god, he'd make the world's best reporter. That what? Joe Exotic would make a very good reporter. What like a personality. Oh my goodness, yes, he would. <laughs> Yeah. He'd be great on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I thought he'd be great with his own talk show. That'd be cool. I think it would be really popular. <laughs> I think it would. Like, wow. <laughs> It'd be better than The View. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. most of them are pretty boring. <laughs> yeah, The View enables people like Carol Baskin. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that the way that this was treated, it sounded like somebody was, he like killed somebody. And I'm like, no, he didn't do any of that. This is all invented crap. You know, he has a lot of conservative fans um, just because where he's from and a lot of, a lot of conservative people like him, but he's not really conservative. No, I mean, he's a libertarian. Yeah. So he's not Democrat or Republican. So, you know, when he says things against Republicans, they get all mad at him. He's like, wait a minute. I'm not 
either. I hate both parties. So don't even don't even go there. You know, we just live in liberty and and owning your own bodies and and living your own truth and and being authentic. Yeah. Yeah. I hate both parties too. Yeah, that's definitely something we agree with him on. (laughs) Libertarian would probably be closest to where we land, but we just don't want to be with any party. But that is, cool. yeah, I'm not, I'm not a purist either. I mean, I, I've been a Democrat my whole life, but I changed to libertarian only because like you said, I don't think there's any, I don't really even like parties at all. I think they should abolish them all. But I mean, I think it's the closest thing. Yeah. Yeah. And you can kind of see that in how Joe has lived his life. You know, he believes in entrepreneurship and yeah, yeah. get out there. He's always and had his own business. Money. Yeah. Um, but he's obviously a member of the LGBTQIA community and right. supports bodily autonomy. And that's so the problem he has with Republicans. Yeah. And his conservative fans. And, and they're saying, oh, no, they're not against, they're not going to make gay marriage illegal. He said, are you paying attention? <laughs> are you paying attention to the news? Because I think there are ones that want to do that. So, uh, yeah, he's he's not a fan of either party. Man, what you want to be. He has been through so much in his life. He has. We were talking, and we actually mentioned this on our podcast about this, that, I mean, he's had two loved ones die, pass away, and now he's spending time in prison. And, I mean, that's... So who are you referring to? His husband? Yeah. And who else? Um, I read that he had a second husband, too, or a fiance that or also someone. passed away his first husband that wasn't his legal husband yeah was, was brian and yeah. brian died of an aids related um that's issue. still bad that's um, still and, bad. And, and joe has never had aids himself but i mean his 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 husband died in his arms in the hospital parking lot it's a very sad story oh well, that's a horrible story yeah it's a horrible story and they were together quite a long time then to go through all of that end up with fake and frivolous charges and end up in prison, which is horrific on its own. I mean. Yeah. And he's I lost would... both his parents since he's been, been in prison. Oh, so he never that. got closure with either one of them, his parents, his mother and his father. So that's, that's something that bothers him a lot too. I mean, it, that would be so hard. That would be really hard to keep going. <laughs> Yeah, and the latest thing is that he's trying to really push this idea, and we've sent we've sent packets to all the senators with this letter and copies of the signed affidavits and the motion for retrial with all the evidence and pictures of when he was abused in prison. Is is he's trying to get this out there? Is that he has suffered abuse in prison, and not just him. A lot of inmates do. Well, but he, he's bringing it out. There's a few YouTubers on YouTube. There's Jessica Kent, Christina Randall, Jen Cutting, and a few others. And they talk about how the food that they're given in prison says not safe for human consumption. Why? Right. It's, it says it right on it. Not human consumption. That's disgusting. And it's just it's just disgusting food. You know, and it depends on what prison you're in. The one he's at now, he doesn't get good food at all. But it's just like a bunch of carbs and junk food. And I mean, there's nothing healthy to eat, really. and it's just, it's not appetizing at all. And it's not just that. It's just uh, the segregation there uh, between, there's a lot of um, racial segregation in prison. Like that. Um, you know, you've got the Hispanics and, the, and the, of course there's gangs, but you got the Hispanics and you've got the, the blacks and you've got the whites. And he said the whites are the most homophobic and they are the worst. So he's hung out with a lot of the, the other people of color because they're more accepted. Most of his friends in there have been Hispanics. That's interesting. Yes, sweet. Yeah. I think that you know, prison prisons obviously need lots of reforming. They do, and I'm of the belief that yeah, you broke the law allegedly, but you shouldn't be treated like a cage animal. Yeah, I mean, since he's been in there, he said he never wants to have a cage animal again. Oh, wow. And I think the other people in the exotic animal world feel like he's sort of turning his back on them because, like. You know that's what he had in his zoo, but now that he's in a cage, he said, "Nope, I don't, I don't want to do it anymore." He doesn't want animals when he gets out. He just wants a dog. <laughs> that's cool, though. Dogs are cool. Well, I mean, look where it's got him. I mean, 
it's just it's not it's not good it's not it's not a good place so i think he just wants to kind of wash his hands of that whole thing yeah i don't blame him start over and he has a fiance now, so he wants to get out and be with him. Oh, that's cute. Aww. And that's just, you know, do his do his thing. So how did you meet Joe? Sorry, I'm having trouble how hearing. Did, how did you meet Joe? Oh, that's a good question. Everybody asked me that. Um, it's very ordinary. I saw Tiger King and wrote him a letter. Oh. Oh. Cool. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Oh, I started as a fan. I mean, I say fan, but not. I mean, not really a fan because I never thought he was funny. I mean, a lot of the th- a lot of the people that liked him liked the funny memes and all that kind of stuff. And that you know, when Tiger King first came out, there were so many memes, and it was such a sensation. And I never really got caught up in that. I watched it, and it bothered me again because I felt like, oh, I don't think he's guilty. I think he's set up. I don't think he should be there. And he was just intrigued me so much. I wrote him a letter, and it was kind of a serious letter, not just a funny letter. And so he wrote me back. <laughs> And then I wrote him again, and he wrote me back. So we did that four times. And then the fourth time, he emailed me. I'm cool. And this is when he was in solitary, so it took like a month to get a letter there and a letter back. So oh, it was yeah. over well, the course. I mean, I wrote him in April, and when he added me to his email, it was like August. Uh, so, And that was in 2020. And um, we just started emailing me back, emailing back and forth. And then at the, at the beginning of 2021, when he didn't get pardoned, uh, I think he was putting all his hopes on that. It didn't happen. Then he decided he needed to have an online store. He was going to be in prison for a while. He wanted to, you know, be able to have someone selling merchandise out there that was uh, authorized by him because there was so much fake stuff out there. So uh, he asked me if I would do it. So I said, okay, sounded fun. So I created a website with my daughter and we started making t-shirts and <laughs> stuff and selling stuff. And, and, um, uh, that kind of morphed into his official website, which he didn't have at the time. Then we started putting news on there and other things, and it grew into the official website. Uh, and then um, um, I became his private attorney last December, so I haven't been it too long. Um, but he ended up getting rid of his former power of attorney, his former attorney, two of his former attorneys. Uh, at just kind of cleaning house, getting rid of a bunch of people, and then he brought me on. So now I do that. But I've been helping him for two years in the background, do, you know, sending letters to senators or, uh, you know, trying to talk to radio stations. I did a, I did um, an interview through email with, um, what was the show? It was on um, cable. Um, it was an LGBTQ uh, Gay USA is that a is that a show? I think it was called Gay USA or something like that. But anyway, I did, I did that. Uh, so I've been kind of doing stuff like that for him, trying to get trying to get support from from that community. It's been hard, actually. Yeah, because they're mostly, from what I've seen, they're mostly kind of liberal Democrats. Um, it's hard to get them to support something like Joe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah get it. sometimes we have the same problem. <laughs> uh, what can people do to help him right now? Oh, there's so many things. He has, um, well, first, I want to say his website that I was talking about is joeexoticusa.com. And there's um, a link on there called Get Involved. And it just is a whole list of things you can do. He has a petition right now. Um, it's to the president and the vice president. Of course, he's asking for a pardon, but it has to do also do with uh, exposing the abuse in the prison system because he's been he's been sexually abused, he's been physically abused uh, in prison. So he's trying to get that out there into the open. Um, there's a petition. There's uh, we have billboards right now. We have one in. Joe, uh, Joe Biden's hometown, or where he went to school in Wilmington, Delaware. And we have another one in San Francisco, uh, just outside San Francisco, uh, where um, Kamala Harris was the assistant DA there, I think. Yeah. So we're, we're trying to target those areas. We tried Chicago, but they wouldn't approve our billboard because that's where Merrick Garland's from. Yep. But um, they haven't approved it because it has a picture of his wrists all bloody from when he was tied to a chair in, in the jail. 
I know that's a serious problem. I'm completely aware of the prison culture. I know that they're very rude to prisoners and there's no reason to be that disrespectful. Well, the reason they tied him to the chair, it was actually when he was in Grady County when he was in federal custody, but he was he was between, he hadn't actually been sent to a federal prison yet. And they, they um, the, the guard there tried to sexually assault him. Um, and so he fought. And so they tied him to a chair. So they tied him naked to a chair for like two weeks in a shower. Two weeks? Yeah. Oh, two weeks. Weeks. Uh, in, a, in a dark shower. And they just like shoved the food through the thing to him. And that was like all the, all the, you know, all the contact he had with anybody. And, you know, they do that to try to break him. But when, but when they fight back. But Joe's a fighter, so he just kept fighting back. So <laughs> he got tied to the chair quite a few times. Oh my God. Yeah. That's horrible. It's disgusting. And the pictures are on the petition and all the billboards. They're kind of graphic. So I mean that's why I think some of the some of the areas have improved them. But we're trying yeah. to get more billboards up and, and we're sending them to a lot of people, not just senators, but some of the Congress people that are more, you know, in the news. And uh, the new the, the BOP has a new director, Colette Peters. She was just appointed, and um, I think she's more uh, she's more liberal in her thinking, like maybe doing away with solitary, which would be a good idea. They really need to do away yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah. We have a lot of friends who've been in solitary confinement. Lots of them tell stories about it. In fact, Jessica Kent, who has been to prison multiple times in her life, actually did a video on her YouTube channel where she locked herself in her bathroom for 24 hours to show us how horrible it was. Really? Yes. Well, I don't think you could find any psychologist that would not agree that it's torture. I mean, I I don't think I've read any any psychologist saying that it's okay to do that to people. Uh, Like Joe likes to point out, he couldn't do that to his animals. They have to have proper socialization or he would get written up by the USDA, but they do it to people. Wow. There was also an inmate that was in New York, was in a New York state prison and he was, um, he, he violated parole or something. And there was like a technicality. He was rearrested and he was murdered. Basically he was jumped and they tossed him into solitary without any health care, and he died. He died. This was just like last year? It was like last year. Well, there was a young man that died in the same shower where they tied Joe to the chair. Uh, oh, it was it was later on, but it was the same room where they had tied him up. And they put a guy in there. His name was Justin Tao. And he was a young man that was being transferred from one prison to another on some drug charge. It wasn't that serious. Uh, but he hung himself. They gave him towels, which was against the protocol. They weren't supposed to do that. And he hung himself with it. And they didn't even check on him. You know, they went back in there and he was dead. Oh, my God. And his, his parents have been trying to get justice for that, trying to sue. Because That's it shouldn't terrible. have happened. It shouldn't yeah. have happened. Never have happened. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, too, is that this also goes back to that constitutional amendment that we're trying to get in the Constitution. It's the same vein. There is an amendment that's the 28th Amendment, and it's called the Equal Rights Amendment. Uh-huh. And if that would get in, people like Joe Exotic wouldn't be charged these ridiculous crimes. Yeah, and that's the other thing is the punishment. And we, we're we not sure why the judge doesn't like him. Um, we think he might be homophobic, but it could be other things. I mean, Joe ran for governor of Oklahoma. There could be a lot of reasons, but he doesn't like him. And he's ruled against him several times before other lawsuits with Carol Baskin. So, yeah. yeah. And yeah. and what they did really, um, they gave they charged him with two counts of murder for hire, which even if he had done it, it should have been one count because it was the same person. And I think the guidelines say if there's nobody that's harmed, the maximum should be ten years. So they gave him the maximum, but they gave him two counts. Well, no, they didn't give him the maximum. They gave him right now he has seventeen years for that for both counts because he has to run them consecutively instead of concurrent. So yeah. that's what they're going to be arguing at his appeal in September. So he got a total of 22, was that it? <laughs> Originally at 22, but four years were on all these paperwork violations. I mean, one was for euthanizing his five tigers, uh, but also most of it was paperwork violations. 
for animals that were transported, that were sold or donated, and they were marked wrong on the form. It's called uh, the Lacey Act. So it was violating the Lacey Act. And then the tigers were violating the Endangered Species Act. And that totally, I think there were 17 counts total on all the animal stuff was four years. So people always want to stress the animal stuff. That isn't the main thing he's doing time for. He's yeah. actually served all that. He's doing time for the murder for hire, which is the setup that is that he didn't even do. He didn't even do it. So that's what we're trying to get them to fix. Um, and also, it shouldn't have been run consecutively either. It no, should have been run concurrently. Uh, he got resentenced in January, and they took ten months off. Ten months. That's it. Yeah. That's all. Well, Derek Chauvin, you know, who <laughs> murdered George Floyd, he was sentenced to uh, 21 years federal in federal prison and then 22 in state. But, I mean, I don't, I don't know if they're concurrent. Well, Joe got 22, and now he has 21. Yeah. So, and that's for that's no one, no one being harmed, no one even being in danger, and paperwork violations and euthanizing five old tigers. Yeah, but we have a man here who killed someone on camera. Who I know, I agree with you. He should have got way more time. There was a gentleman who was sentenced. Was it in Pennsylvania? And he had done all this stuff. He robbed a judge. He'd done this and that. And he was sentenced to over two hundred years in prison. Two hundred. He's well, out you know, now, but Joe has a friend. Joe has a friend in prison right now that had got 175 years. Like these, these sentences are ridiculous. He robbed a couple of banks, but what? who's going to live that long? No one. What's the point? There's no That's point. Really dumb. Yeah, it's crazy. The sentencing's crazy. I don't get it. There's people that have actually murdered people, and I mean, actually done it. They get less than 21 years. Mm-hmm. Some of those guys only get like 10, 15 years. And their Joe is 21 years for shooting a few tigers that belonged to him that were in pain. They were they were suffering a long time. They were um, they had problems with their claws. They'd been declawed improperly. And so they were like like claws growing out of their ankles. And they were just they were in a lot of pain walking. And they had been that way for a long time. And the USDA had been telling him, you know, you really should put them down. But he kept them alive um and i think after his husband died that's when he's, he kind of had this he just kind of looked at things differently he said you know what i can't make these animals suffer just to collect donations i've got to i've got to put them out of their suffering so he did which he was told that he could do yeah and they said that he couldn't Getting do it sense. so i wonder what other people do when that happens, not just to cats, but to other exotic pets or zoos or whatever. Well, they, I mean, everybody euthanizes animals all the time. Farm animals, people do it all the time. Oh, yeah. Horses, uh, you know, like I know some people that will go euthanize their cat just because it. You know, I know. I mean, that's OK. okay. But. It wasn't okay for him, I guess. That is so bizarre. We always say, because we've taken up cases like this before and covered them on our channel, you can't make up rules for one person or apply the rules more harshly to just one person. You have to apply them equally to all. And and that's the thing. Nobody has ever been charged under that act the way he has ever been convicted like he has done. Or I don't know if they've even been charged the way he has them. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's like, it's so obvious they were targeting him. Yeah. I know that um, Bhagavan was, he was supposed to face a judge this month, or last month. But I don't think he did. Because, um, well, Doc Antle has a lot of money. Yeah. So it's, it's, been e it's been easier for him to fight. Joe was broke. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no. Joe was. I mean, kidding. because of Carol's one million dollar judgment, which he still owes for some of that. So, I mean, he was broke. He had a public defender, and they obviously did a terrible job. We have a name for those. We call them public pretenders. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if you ever heard that before, but that's what they call them. No, but I mean, 
<laughs> they work for the government, so the government's suing them. Whose side are they going to be on? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It makes you wonder. <laughs> and Jeff Lowe has faced some repercussions, but not anything for... Not in the way that... It's so hard now. Is, you know, even with the affidavits, and, and wait, we're still waiting for the judge to approve a retrial, but they do have an appeal starting in September, oral arguments in the appeals court. It's an uphill battle. Oh, yeah. And I mean, he was given strict scrutiny when he didn't deserve it. He deserves some little, I mean, fines, maybe. A year or two, maybe. But over 20 years, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, that there's there's several issues. One is that he got set up and he didn't do it. But the other issue is that the punishment's too severe, even if he did do it. Good Lord, it sounds like they like sentenced him for like murdering some, actually murdering someone. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, and he's just he's and he does not he's not doing that good. I mean, he's he just overcame cancer. Uh, he just had radiation treatments, like forty two radiation treatments, and he's just finally starting to recover from that. Uh, he has something else wrong. He's been vomiting like from three months straight almost. Hmm. Um, so they don't really know what's wrong, what's causing that. I mean, he has dental issues. And the dental care in prison is really bad. It doesn't exist. All they do is pull your teeth out. Yep. Christina and, and then they make, you, they make you wait a long time, so you're paying for a long time before that happens. Doesn't Christina Randall has a video about that? They don't, res they don't do any restorative dentistry, you know? I mean, you can end up toothless at the end. People they have. Just pull your teeth out. He's already had two pulls. And he has a dental issue. He has a, de a painful tooth right now. And they do nothing except give you aspirin. So that might be upsetting his stomach, too. I mean, yeah, he has, he's was. always had issues with his stomach. So he has a very sensitive stomach. But he also has two incurable diseases that he was born with. Um, and I don't know how to pronounce, pronounce the one. It's a type of anemia. But it goes with his common immune variable disorder that he has. And that's a congenital thing. Uh, that you're born with, but he didn't get diagnosed till like 2014 with that. He didn't even know he had it until then because he almost died in the hospital. He had prostate surgery and his, and he went septic because he has that immune disorder and they didn't know. He had, and, and they kept thinking he had AIDS. They kept testing him over and over. And, like, and we have, we have, have that. An, anemia runs in our family. Yeah. He has a, a, a type of anemia that I can't remember the name of i can't pronounce this like hemagemoglobin or i don't know what it's called oh yeah i've heard of it yeah, but it's, it's, it's a kind of anemia that is that is associated with his immune disorder so he so they're both there. he has to get yeah, um, antibodies by iv infusion every four weeks oh my goodness yeah so that's he why he's at a medical prison well and yeah like that's where he belongs I mean, I know they have, there's a medical prison in Rochester, Minnesota, I yeah, think. Yeah, there is one in Rochester. Yeah, I know. We're, I think these you know, we're, in dialysis we're maybe an hour north of Rochester. So I do, that's why I know. That's a there. nice, I mean, from the outside, that looks pretty nice. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> that makes any it, sense. I've seen it's it. Kinda it's kind of new, isn't it? It's kind it's of a really new. new. I mean, no, no prison is nice, but uh, from what I've seen, it looks like one of the better ones. Well, he has a, he has a prisoner advocate right now named Wesley that's Todd. Good. I don't know if you know him, but he was in a uh, federal prison himself before and state prison. Mm -hmm. And he has advocated for himself and some other prisoners by getting them, you know, early releases or compassionate releases or, and he actually has done a whole report on the abuse that Joe has received in prison and the neglect. And he's, he's uh, works with Marco Rubio and uh, he's taken it before Congress. Oh, that's good though. That's awesome. That's yeah. We'll have to so, I mean, at the very least, if you can't get him a compassionate release or or something, you know, like that, he can at least uh, maybe improve his conditions. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a very famous prisoner in New York State who was let out via COVID restrictions and um, subsequently was on house arrest and then subsequently went to prison three days, back to prison three days later. Oh. And I'm like, wait, what? That was Sheldon Silver. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and we thought that Joe was a good candidate for that during COVID. They let yeah. a lot of people out, and with his immune disorder, he would have been a good candidate for that, I would think. Didn't yeah. Didn't Why happen. didn't they do that? I think they tried. 
feel bad for him. He seems like a nice guy. He really does. <laughs> the genuine care. He wrote he, what he said to us was very nice. It was really sweet. He was very nice to us. Yeah, he told me to contact you. I, I think you didn't get my first text. So I sent you no. a text and, and maybe he gave me the wrong number. <laughs> I thought, okay, well, I guess I'm not interested. I'm not going to keep bothering him. And then I got one from you and I'm like, okay, I guess that was the wrong number. <laughs> he gave us another number too for another lady. Bottom? I think, yeah. That's his uh, divorce attorney. She but never he just hired her as his personal attorney and his publicist. Oh, yeah. She never got back to she us. She never got back to us. You were the only one that did. Yeah, she has a lot of clients, though. Not just him. I believe that. <laughs> I mean, I have a full-time job, too, besides what I do for him. So it's hard sometimes, but I just like to devote my whole life to him. <laughs> <laughs> for the last two years. Wow. Yeah, well, anything we can do to help. I know. Let us know. Please. I mean, the main thing he wants is for people to, um, you know, if they have any connections at all with celebrities or politicians or the president. We have uh, connections with celebrities. Several connections with celebrities. It's hard getting them on board, you know. Well, we'll do what we can. We haven't really been able to get any big celebrities on board. Yeah, and the celebrities we're friends with are very controversial. Yep. It's <laughs> they have their own problem. Oh. They, uh, you know, yeah, Joe is... Oh, and that's that's Damien. Uh, <laughs> we, have three, we have three of them. We have three. Mine has not done that yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I understand he's very controversial, but... I don't know. I don't think he's controversial, but but I know yeah. him. So. Like I said, I, I think he was on like David Letterman when we were kids. I remember him. I remember Joe from 20, 30 years ago. Not that long ago, but quite a while ago now. When we were when we were kids, we had a sister that was like obsessed with like, like animal show. Are we have this yeah. sister? And she was like, "It's Joe Exotic," and I was like, "Oh, it's that guy." <laughs> I yeah, you know, I think a lot of kids saw him at their mall and didn't realize who he was at the time until yeah. later on when he got famous. And they're like, "Oh yeah, I saw that guy." No, oh, I remember him. I don't think I ever saw him in a mall. I wish I had. It's you know, it's possible we did. I don't we remember. Might have. I don't remember. He also took his animals to some of the uh, state fairs. I know he used to go to uh, Iowa to the state fair there. So oh, fun. But the main thing he wants to know, I want these people to know, is you know, lately he's been saying, you know, what's all the big deal about Brittany Griner? You know. So Brittany Griner broke the law, and there's this big deal about trying to get her out of a foreign prison. They're saying Russia prisons have a 99% conviction rate, right? She was sentenced today. Nine years. Nine years. Our prisons federally have a 98% conviction rate. I thought, so. I thought it was that high. I so when people say, when people say, oh, the Russians, you know, I kind of wonder what their conditions are because his are bad. Who is that? And I don't think, I think that the attention should be focused on, uh, he thinks, should be focused on our people, Americans in our prisons being treated so badly. And people are so concerned about what goes on in a Russian prison. Why not here? Why aren't they investigating our prisons? I mean, there's Jessica Kent, who was pregnant in prison. And she was arrested in a state where she didn't know anybody. She just about lost her daughter to the system. Just about. She came like within milliseconds of losing her. Well, and the stuff they do, I did it. I actually studied criminal justice for my master's degree, but I quit it because I didn't like it. I got it in business. But but when I was studying that, I did actually did a report on uh, women in prison, uh, did research on that. And, I, and pregnant women are like shackled to the bed when they give birth. Mm-hmm. And some of the prisons are so far from the hospital, they can't even make it there in time. Yep. I mean, there's all kinds of horrible things that happen. Well, and Trump just, actually helped change the, he changed the law regarding federal uh, prisons. Yeah, federal prisons that you can no longer chain a woman's, pregnant woman's belly. Who did that? Belly anymore. Trump, Trump did that. Did. That's <laughs> of all the weird people to do that. He well, that's a good thing. That. I can't imagine being chained down trying to give birth. That's. Jen Cutting talks about it. <laughs> Kent talks about it. There's a couple of YouTubers. Well, they always say that a lot of comments say, well, 
you shouldn't have broken the law. So we don't care how you're treated. But that's ridiculous. That's the, that's the problem is that's the mindset for some reason. In this country, people think, well, you did something wrong. You deserved it's prison. You deserve to suffer. But I think that I think prison should be rehabilitated and restorative. It shouldn't be this punishing look at you know mindset where you're because all you're doing is creating monsters. Then they get out, they're just as bad or worse than they were. And look at the recidivism rate. Yeah. It doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. No. It's not working. No. So and you know, and I'm a big fan of restorative justice and not not this idea of punishing people. It doesn't help anybody. No. People want and to I mean, it doesn't even bring victims back. It doesn't help anybody. No. So, well, yeah. I mean, you until we can change that mindset of the majority. We got to find a way, yeah. We do. And we got interest in this because we're interested in prison reform. That makes any sense. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, I've always been kind of an advocate for prison reform, even before I knew who Joe was. Because this was long before I knew who he was, but um, I think that's what piqued my interest in him, his story. I just wanted to help him get out. That's the ultimate goal. We got we got to keep going. We can't stop. Yeah, it's just so hard, you know. Once you get that conviction and once you're locked away, it's, they don't let him do interviews. Uh, they won't let him talk to the press like they do other inmates. We don't know why. Like he's just not allowed. John Wayne Gacy got to though. There's a yes. I, every people I mean, on death row murders. Yeah, yeah. John Wayne Gacy did a special that came out I'm on Peacock not even that long ago. Somebody really, 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 really wants to keep Joe quiet. Exactly. Yep, that's what he thinks. What What could he possibly say? That's so horrible. It's hard to keep him quiet too, and they know that. If he knows something, he's gonna tell it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not he's not a quiet person. He's never gonna go quiet. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, that's what I love about him. <laughs> we have a an autistic teenager in this house who absolutely loves Joe. Yeah. <laughs> what does she call him? I don't remember. The cat guy. The or cat guy. Like, so, or the cat king or something. The cat king. <laughs> she comes up with their own way of saying things like vacuum cleaner is a vacuum the cleaner. <laughs> she also has a speech language disorder, so she can't really say anything, but she absolutely adores him. And I'm like, well, if my daughter has a pretty good bullshit meter. So, I mean, you'd be surprised that, you know, I, I see some of his fan mail and he talks about it. He has quite a lot of kids that are fans that really think he's a hero and also and 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 in autistic kids too and 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 um and you know people with all kinds of challenges and disabilities like him i know quite a few that do so i don't know i don't know why they seem to be drawn to him <laughs> his personality i suppose <laughs> yeah i think he just kind of draws them in yeah. My daughter likes very animated people. Right. Right. She, she loves to be teased, you know, and get into her face and make like lots of facial expressions. She loves that. And Joe's very good at that. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> she was so excited when that letter came. She was like, She mailed he, he, he mailed us. She what read she, she she brought it to bed with her and she slept next to it. Yes. <laughs> Like, it was so cute. Okay. Um, made her happy. Yep. Made her very happy. But yeah, like you were saying earlier, we don't, we're not fans. We're supporters. There's a huge difference. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I don't know what I am anymore. It's hard to just explain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm his friend. Started out yeah. as a friend. Became That's a friend. Sounds and like. I, I, I work for him. So I'm not really, I don't know. We got another one, the little girl. Hi. I'm his friend more than anything, I think. Aw, that's sweet. <laughs> but she really likes to watch. She liked she liked to watch the Tiger King. We rewatched it recently. She was like <laughs> I've never seen her do that before. She loved that's it. That's funny. <laughs> they probably think they're big cats. They probably do. <laughs> they probably do, yeah. 
They probably do. They, or they think we're their pets. <laughs> I think like, they definitely believe that. We always have cats surrounding us. Well, all we can do is hope that we can get things changed. I think we can. I think we can. We did it for Adam Clawson did it, so why can't Joe Fatty do it? Yeah. Any any last words? Anything else you want to say? Anything we missed? Anything out? I mean, the main thing I've been talking about, like I said, he wants to push this lately, is about the conditions in prison and the and the abuse and the, and the treatment and, and 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 the treatment of him specifically. Um, you know, he didn't even ask for any of this fame. It happened after he was arrested. It was all Netflix. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, not that he dislikes it, but it's kind of been rough for him in prison because they treat him differently. He has so much fan mail. So they have such strict rules for his mail and they send a lot of it back. If it's not to their liking, like perfect, um, just you know, like it has to be a white envelope, it has to be white paper, you can't use markers, it has to be regular pen, it can't be written on both sides, it can't be more than five pages, it can't be, you know, so they have like all these rules, and they're real strict with his because he gets so much of it, so fans are always getting their stuff sent back all the time, um, I, was I think they just think that he's a pain. I was surprised ours didn't come back, honestly. <laughs> well, we follow so many prisoners, felons, that we know kind of how they talk about it. <laughs> Because I mean, I don't know if he's the most famous prisoner, but I'm just saying it's kind of unique because he didn't get famous until he was in prison. And, and so that's been kind of weird. And that's why he's got so many people selling illegal merchandise and ripping them off. We've, we've identified, his lawyers identified 60 different companies so far that are illegally selling merchandise under his name. Oh, my God. That is, that's illegal, isn't it? And that, I think that's just in this country. I don't think that counts China or anything. So it's just crazy, the stuff that's going on, you know, and, and it's just, yeah, I mean, he certainly doesn't have any money. If he did, he'd maybe not be in there and have a better lawyer to begin with. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> well, yeah, you're definitely welcome back on here if there's any updates you ever want to share or anything else that you feel like needs to be said well the main thing is like I said is his appeal starts September 29th is oral arguments on his appeal in Denver at the appellate court so yeah. that's that's starting his appeal which is a long process because then they have to wait for months for a decision yep I and know. then they have to wait for the judge to put it on the docket and you know it could still drag out a long time so okay. he's kind of depressed about that because even though he's getting a second shot it's not going to be quick yeah our justice system is not set up to correct things that are, <clears throat> that are done wrong to people like that and he's not the only one there's a lot of innocent people in prison and it, look how long it takes them to get out years and years shouldn't be like that no no Give Joe our best, I guess. Oh, you okay. gave me a kiss. You gave me a kiss. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. Each other, too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you, thank so, you much so much for joining us. Okay. Well, it's my pleasure. I like talking about Joe. <laughs> we'll chat soon. Yep. Great. Okay. Bye. 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 So we are going to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. We know that this is not something that's easy to talk about. So... That means a lot to us. So give this video a big thumbs up to indicate that you liked it. Smash that subscribe button down below to indicate that you liked our videos and want to see more of them. For the record, General repost videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 11 a.m. Central, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We Most of the time we go live on Sunday nights, but not always. If you still can't get enough of us, you also might be interested in knowing the podcast entitled Gap with the Gala Sisters, which is on movies and TV. If you still can't get enough of us and still want to hear more from us, we also have a second podcast entitled The Gala Sisters Presents Miss Wrestling Grace, which goes out the Thursday before a WWE pay-per-view event. And we've got merch that we made ourselves that you guys can go buy but today i would rather that you go to tammy's website and that you purchase joe exotics merch 
which we don't have any because we don't plagiarize people, <laughs> obviously. And, you know, get going. Email your legislatures. Tweet. Share this video. And let's get the word out and let's make a huge movement and let's make it trend so that we can get him out this time. Let's make this appeal matter and make it work. Help us out. I know that you, Marilyn Manson, Johnny Depp, Andrew Cuomo people, you guys are really good at this. So let's do this. You, you've looked at everything. You know what's going on here. You're not stupid. We know that. And again, if you want to donate to our work and help us, because this is work we put a lot of time and effort into these interviews, you can buy us a $3 coffee. You can donate to us via PayPal. Again, don't go broke doing it. Supporting us is free, but it does really help us out. I mean, we have to keep these lights on. And re remember, this channel is just the two of us. There are no other Gala sisters, ever. That will never, ever, ever happen. No one speaks for us. No one sets up interviews for us. We do not have a manager. And if we have a manager someday, we will hire them and there will be a contract. There's nobody who does right now. So if somebody is coming to you saying that they are, that's a lie, that's not true. And then we're gonna have to talk to you. So yeah, thank you so much for being loyal subscribers and watching this and supporting Joe with us. And Joe, we're here for you. We got your back. So thank you so much. We will talk to you again soon. Love and share. Bye. Bye.